some fans, you know, switched up. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. They switched up and purportedly started stanning other female rappers but in reality, they were just bullying Nikki online and bullying the barbs when they just used to be one. It gives me a lot of make it make sense. All of this has divided the fan base and a lot of OG barbs, especially like myself, felt very disrespected by people within our community essentially turning against the community because it looked like that was the hot thing to do. That's really where the chaos lies. It's because there is this fission and this fault line in the fan base from those that switched up and now they just argue with each other all day on Twitter and sub each other about um, chart positions. At the beginning, it was Nikki and the Barbs against the world. And I think that the difficult step for the Barb's to embrace is heal from the hate train and then get back to what's important, loving Nicki Minaj's music. We need to let go of trying to get her to compete, let go of trying to be her A&R, let go of trying to force everything to be a number one, let go of trying to hold on to the past because it hurt us. Let go of all of that and let Nikki shine. Hi guys, welcome back to No Ghostwriter. This is Blessing Makosha. Follow No Underscore Ghostwriter on Twitter and Instagram for 24 seven rap and hip hop talk. And be sure to leave a comment, like this video and subscribe if you like what I'm talking about today. So today I am taking a deep dive into Nicki Minaj's fan base, AKA the Barbs, of which I'm a very loyal member. I am I consider myself to be an OG Barb. And I have had some people call me a head barb at times, leader of the British barb delegation and other such honors, which I humbly and graciously accept. So specifically what I wanted to talk about today is some of the trauma and chaos that's going on within this fan base. And the reason I think that it's important to talk about this is because the Barbs compromise the largest female rap fan base in hip hop and much of the current era of newer female rappers, so female rappers that have come out since Nicki Minaj has come up, are more or less heavily reliant upon the interest of either the Barbs or very specific local um, or online communities that they've developed and cultivated. But even those are absolutely no match in size and significance as the Barbs. So if there's trauma and chaos within female rap's largest and most active fan base, then that could spell quite significant ripple effects for not just female hip hop, but hip hop in general. And that's why I'm gonna get into it and talk about it. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then stick around and keep watching this video. So no video on Nicki Minaj's fan base, The Barbs, is gonna be complete without an introduction to who The Barbs are and why they are such a powerful force and a significant cultural imprint upon hip hop. So Nicki Minaj, as you may or may not know, is Barbie. Barbie is a huge part of her brand. Since her come up, she's used the Barbie aesthetic and defined herself as a black Barbie. Now other female rappers before her have definitely called themselves things like black Barbies before it is definitely an aesthetic um, that has been seen before but with Nikki she really popularized it um, on a global international level and took her Barbie brand to places that female rap had never seen it go before so what I've talked about a lot in a lot of my videos about Nicki Minaj's career and her come up especially in my video on why she didn't sign the female rapper 360 deal I explained that Nikki's come up was very organically you know put together as as she cultivated her own fan base through social media at the time, which was MySpace. So MySpace um, is a blast from the past. You know, millennials just saw the tail end of MySpace, the younger millennials like myself, we saw the tail end and anyone after us probably has absolutely no idea what MySpace is. But MySpace essentially was a social media networking application and people often shared a lot of music and stuff. So it was quite big for bands and artists. So think of it like Spotify.
Spotify, except the artist was putting their music up for you to listen to rather than a streaming service. So when Nicki came out and popularized her Barbie aesthetic, her fans started to be named in her image. So she popularized Barbie, Harajuku Barbie, Head Barbie, HB, these were interchangeable. So above all, she is the Head Barbie, she's the Harajuku Barbie. So her fans were either Barbies or Ken Barbs, so Barbs. And if you are actually interested, there used to be an entire wiki dedicated to all of the language um, that Nicki Minaj and her Barbs use, and you can check that out if you'd like to see that. Um, so that is essentially where the name Barb came from, and that is why Nicki Minaj's fans are called the Barbs. Now, as I've discussed in many videos, and is really evident from Nicki's career longevity, she's been around for a while she's been kicking around in this rap game for quite a while in fact she recently went viral when T-Pain reminisced on when Nicki aired him in 2007 because he was trying to get her to work on a collab and she was responding um, in the shade room comments and said well listen I was so overworked I was pushing myself so hard I can't believe it so Nicki has been working and in the industry making connections since about 2007 to that even before that so that means that there are lots of different types of barbs that fall into different barb eras and there are the earliest barbs so people who were there mixtape days um, and I've seen them refer to themselves as things like team Minaj you know the real OG myspace um, fans and then there's different eras of fans as things have progressed and I would say I consider myself a solid OG Barb I was around for like itty bitty piggy pink Friday and beam me up Scotty came but I didn't realize because I was in England you know just bootlegging songs on like LimeWire and stuff so I didn't realize that um, there was like a full mixtape of work because there was no way I was gonna be able to I didn't get invited to Justin Coombs' birthday party, so Nikki never handed me um, a mixtape. <laughs> myself one of the OGs but of course there's barbs from different eras and it's worthwhile remembering that because as Nikki's career has progressed the environment upon within which she's worked her music's been received and within which her fan base has existed has completely changed and barbs distinguish themselves by the different um, eras they come from and it's a whole thing so it's not enough to be a barb you need to either have barb credentials like my Myself, and I'm not even the most you know studded out Barb I have a Nikki follow so that makes me you know of a certain elite tier of Barb's but above all it's based on historical longevity you know how long have you been knowing Nikki's music how long have you been supporting for her how long have you been writing for her very important that you remember that context something very significant to understand why I'm even having this conversation about trauma and chaos is because of the different social media platforms that Nicki Minaj's barbs use. So of course as I mentioned Nicki was an OG um, and she was on MySpace but she also was a very early user of Twitter. In fact there's a very interesting story where Soldier Boy because of course he is the first rapper to do everything he explains how he got Nicki Minaj on Twitter and got her started. Nicki Minaj, love Nicki Minaj, bro. Yes, bitch, yes. <laughs> I created Nicki Minaj Twitter for her when we was on tour, back on the Lil Wayne tour. Y'all should be thanking me. She got the most followers on Twitter right now. And you made her Twitter I page. I created her Twitter page. If it wasn't for me, Nicki Minaj wouldn't have no Twitter, and y'all wouldn't be able to follow Nicki. A fake Nicki tweeted me, and I called her, and I'm like, yo, you just tweeted me? She like, no, nah, what's Twitter? I'm like, hold on, let me make you a page. Sent her a login. Y'all niggas should be thanking me. So because of that, that role that social media has played in Nicki Minaj's career, her barbs distinguish themselves by which sort of platform they use. And Nicki's social media innovation and the, you know, 
way in which her fans have harnessed social media to share her music, talk about her, interact with her is absolutely fascinating. And if you'd like me to do a video on Nicki Minaj's social media innovation or just generally the use of social media by Nicki Minaj and female rappers and stuff, let me know in the comments. I would love to do that. So where are we right now? Well, there's different types of barbs on different types of platforms, but the main sort of standouts of where everyone is, is you've got the Twitter barbs. So those are very likely to be OG barbs like myself or Team Minaj, because those are the people who around 2009 joined Nikki on that platform. So there are a lot of very big barb community on Twitter. Then we have the Instagram barbs. So those are the ones that you're gonna see dragging for Nikki on the shade room. And actually the Instagram barbs are not to be slept on because they have cultivated massive Instagram pages um, in support of Nicki Minaj and her music. One of the biggest ones, Celebs Love Nicki Minaj, is absolutely huge and Nicki follows that one. And I think it just goes to the testament of how strong her brand is and her connection with her fans that she's been able to create well, her fans, inspired by her, have been able to create massive Instagram kingdoms purely dedicated to her and her music and her content, which is absolutely incredible. Then you've got the YouTube barbs. So those are people like myself and Nathie Minaj, who's also appeared on this channel, and other um, channels like Black Tea Blog, I'm Just Saying, and so on. So the barbs that, you know, get together and put um, content together on YouTube, have discussions, you know, provide just a little bit of a different type of content for the barbs to consume. But now, we're in a new era, and this is really where a lot of that trauma and that chaos has started to come in. And that's because there are new barbs in town. And those new barbs have sort of started to cause a little bit of a shake up and started to force a lot of the barbs, especially the ones on Twitter, to reflect and reevaluate the status of the fan base and actually what the goals and priorities are for people who are fans of Nicki Minaj in a new era. So before she returned to us with the re-release of Be Me Up Scotty, Nicki Minaj was actually on her longest ever career hiatus and I did a video about that on the channel. But when she came back, she didn't just come back saying anything, she came back with a bang and she had some very specific and interesting words to say about TikTok. And the reference that she was making was that the music she was releasing was real rap music and wasn't TikTok shit. So she wasn't just making songs that were gimmicks to go on TikTok. But interestingly, Nikki started interacting on TikTok a bit more and more and more. And she's really started to encourage and cultivate a different generation and spectrum of fans who have been showing her a lot of love and attention on TikTok. Remember how I've talked about in the channel before on other videos, including Hip Hop's Nicki Minaj problem, about how TikTok has been used, how TikTok, um, despite Nicki not really creating any original content on there, is still constantly trending. And I said that shows the significance of her brand. But these new TikTok, you know, barbs, this new energy that's coming into the fan base has started to sort of challenge where the fan base was and it kind of indicate where the fan base is going. I want to say quickly, this wasn't Nicki Minaj's first foray onto TikTok. She actually was using it when it was called a different app, Musical.ly. Um, so she's been on there before. But she really seemed to make a lot of um, interactions and engagements on TikTok. And it actually prompted her fans on Twitter, so the Twitter barbs, to say, you know, what's going on? You know, I see you're on TikTok. And she actually specifically said she wanted to avoid what she had recognized and 
not uh, not just her, as the toxicity that was present on Twitter. So in the wake of Nicki Minaj essentially embracing a new platform of barbs and telling the Twitter barbs, so much of the OG barbs, people who've come online during the height of social media, that the environment was toxic and she was moving into a newer space, this has led to a lot of expression of views that the fan base is falling apart and a lot of people within the barbs on Twitter sort of talking about what they feel like their role is as fans now and how things are supposed to be developing. So what exactly would lead Nicki Minaj to call or at least recognize that a contingent of her fan base had become toxic? Why would she need to call that out? And what does that mean for the barbs? And this, these questions right here are where all of the issues that we are going to discuss about trauma and chaos lie. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to look at the question of whether Nicki Minaj's fan base is really falling apart. What does that mean? And also, what is the impact of the trauma and chaos that's affected this fan base? And what does that mean not only for the future of the barbs, but also for the future of female hip hop and also the future of hip hop itself? So let's get into it. Well, firstly, it is very true that after multiple hiatuses and changes to how we consume hip hop content, so that's music, visuals, everything, Nicki's fan base has now become decentralized. Whereas in the past, you had the very strong, unbreakable unit of, you know, Team Minaj, or those OG barbs that were active in the earliest days of her career. As Nikki's career advanced and social media also advanced, more and more people were able to essentially participate in the barb banter or the barb culture. And whilst it has benefits and it can be fun, there's also definitely been pointed moments where Nikki's actually said, this isn't fun anymore, like it used to be. You know, there used to be, you know, like a, Almost like we were, Barb's were having a one-on-one -on -one with Nikki. It was almost like a public, private community. And largely that was because those were the OGs on Twitter and stuff. So Stan Twitter was very much born out of some of these original fan bases of artists like Nicki Minaj, like Lady Gaga and so on, who were active on Twitter in the earliest stages. But now things have changed. Now, of course, we've got Instagram, and I mentioned the Instagram barbs, and it was through Instagram that Nicki Minaj was able to popularize her now infamous Barbie lifestyle aesthetic and birth the modern IG model and influencer. Every single Instagram model and influencer is a mimic or replica of that era, of that time, of that aesthetic that Nicki Minaj popularized. And so before 2021, Nicki's interactions were largely limited to Twitter and Instagram. And that is until, of course, I talked about the great disruptor, TikTok. Now, I already talked about what the significance of TikTok has been to Nicki Minaj. For her, she feels like it's a breath of fresh air from the toxicity of um, Twitter. And she's definitely been quite open about seeking greener pastures to interact with her fans, both new ones and existing. But this is why many barbs on Twitter feel like she's moved on and they started to declare the end of an era because as Nikki's fan base becomes bigger, it becomes decentralized. It's no longer just about these OG barbs on Twitter and the Instagram barbs with these, you know, big pages. It's actually about a whole lot of organic one-on-one -on -one connection between Nikki and her fans on an app that's being celebrated, at least for the creator perspective, of allowing anyone from anywhere to be seen by anyone. And the interesting thing about the way Nicki Minaj specifically interacts with TikTok is that she's one of the very few celebrities that actually keeps her likes visible. So that is, you can see whose content Nicki Minaj likes and she leaves comments. If people are using her sounds, she leaves comments and says, that's dope. You know, it is 
absolutely insane to think about an artist of that magnitude just on TikTok using her For You page like anyone else would. But it just goes to the magic of how innovative Nicki Minaj is with social media and also goes to show how she is definitely building up a different fan base on TikTok. You know, I want to make an aside point here and say, when I was talking about TikTok in my Hip Hop's Nicki Minaj problem video, I said, Nicki's not in a rush to jump in and use TikTok like the other girls. You know, she's not gonna be trying to, you know, pop, lock and drop for a hit. But she's using TikTok really, in another way that it's supposed to be used, and maybe the most important way, by engaging with people's content. So rather than leading by creating her own, she's engaging with people and developing and cultivating fans that way, which is pretty unique actually, and I don't think there's ever been a social media platform that's really allowed Nikki to do that with such ease. So yes, you are definitely seeing a strong decentralization of the barbs and a shift of the landscape of who barbs are and where they congregate and where Nikki interacts with them. Now, do I think that actually can be defined as trauma and chaos? I'm not so sure. I think that sometimes, you know, stands can be dramatic. I mean, it's in the nature of it. We're hyper obsessed stands, you know? But I think maybe, and I'll get into this, but I think that a variety of barbs across multiple different platforms is amazing for Nikki's brand and for the fan base as a whole. I've definitely seen, you know, Twitter barbs, you know, they'll make fun of TikTok barbs and, you know, say, oh no, here the TikTok barbs go again. But actually, barbs on Twitter, not, and this isn't to criticize them because I am a Twitter barb, but I think that we've suffered for a little bit of a, of a hive mind. And that's not just something that stands have to deal with. I think that's something anyone that uses Twitter quite avidly has to be careful of. Getting yourself into a little bit of a closed off bubble. And life beyond Stan Twitter is worthy of our attention and actually, as Nikki quite rightly said, Twitter isn't really a lot other than people giving opinions and interacting with, you know, fan bases that don't respect her. So of course she's going to seek out more, just better vibes. And I think it's important as fans that we respect that, you know what, each social media application has its drawbacks. And for an artist like Nicki Minaj, guarding your energy and protecting your peace is important and unless we want to see her go on another hiatus I think it makes sense for her to take out um, this time to carve out a new fan base and I don't think the decentralization of the fan base is a bad thing So I want to expand this conversation around trauma and chaos within the fan base and move beyond social media slightly and look at a tangential issue. Um, and that is industry politics as a whole. Now, as well as, you know, changes to social media, one of the biggest things the barbs in particular have had to handle is the changes to the female rap market and the emergence of new female rappers. And for me, I think that many barbs have misunderstood what this means. Um, and they've sort of misunderstood what the birth of a generation of rappers um, since Nicki Minaj um, means when Nicki Minaj is still active and creating music in now what is her second decade. So there have been lots of different uh, things that have happened because of the emergence of new female rappers, but I think one of the most significant and traumatic things of the, for the fan base is that some barbs started to forget that they were fans and started to act more like a and r and that simply came from a place of comparing Nikki to 
the new generation that she had birthed and influenced and they wanted her to compete you know if cardi does a big budget video they want nikki to do big budget videos if megan does a you know choreography bit they want nikki to do a choreography bit if doja does something in a pink pool they want nikki to do something in a pink pool you know and i understand where that comes from and I don't necessarily think it comes from a bad place per se. They want to see their fave in their mind look her biggest and her best. But I think that's actually, I'll get into it, but I just think that was really toxic. And I don't think that was a great mindset that a lot of barbs carried. Um, another impact, and this wasn't, I wouldn't say it was major, but it was a significant minority of barbs. They frankly just couldn't handle seeing other female rappers doing things whilst Nikki was also there. And so they abandoned their support of Nikki, especially during the peak of the hate train. So, you know, when Nicki Minaj is getting blackboard from radio, she's not really doing a lot of industry appearances. She's not trying to, you know, clout chase to be that girl because she is that girl and some fans you know switched up like i don't know how else to explain it they switched up and purportedly started stanning other female rappers but in reality they were just bullying nikki online and bullying the barbs when they just used to be one it gives me a lot of make it make sense but this is just the reality of what happened. There were fans that just, I guess they weren't really there for female hip hop. They were more there to live vicariously through pop stars, I guess. And so if they felt like Nicki was not that girl, they just switched. These switchy switcheroo fans constantly switch. You'll see them switch their Avi from Nicki to this. And then, you know, you've got fans who say they're hybrids and it's a whole thing. But all of this has divided the fan base and a lot of OG barbs, especially like myself, felt very disrespected by people within our community essentially turning against the community because it looked like that was the hot thing to do. And unfortunately, the ramification of that is that a lot of time goes into arguing between OG barbs and the barbs that switched up for other fan bases. It's sad, it's toxic, and literally no wonder Nikki left for TikTok it's it that's really where the chaos lies it's because there is this fission and this fault line in the fan base from those that switched up and now they just argue with each other all day on twitter and sub each other about um chart positions it's not great but you know that's something that happened wrap this video with my third point on trauma and chaos and this is the biggest point I think this is the most significant point I think this point explains a lot about the barbs that I've seen different media outlets um, try and explain um, rather lazily if I might add and I've definitely seen the barbs themselves and just general people wanting to understand why are the barbs so aggressive? You know, why are the barbs so willing to tear off limbs and go in for Nicki Minaj? And understanding the next point that I'm gonna make is gonna help anyone who is struggling to get it, get it very well. And that is the very real trauma that Nicki Minaj's fans experienced during the hate train and the impact that had upon the barbs because this has not been fully recognized or acknowledged by hip hop. I want to link you to my video on the Nicki Minaj hate train and also my video on um, after the hate train, hip hop has a Nicki Minaj problem. In both of these videos, I talked about the impact the hate train had upon the barbs. But I really want to emphasize and stress now, seeing a woman that they support and love 
continuously mistreated, bullied, lied on, gaslighted was extremely traumatic and difficult. It's hard for people to understand because they say, oh, I could never stand someone I don't know. Maybe, but some people do. You know, some people develop real emotive connections to artists and their music. I mean, look at my Nicki Minaj Queen vinyl. It stays, <laughs> this is my day, I see it every day. You know, some people develop strong emotional connections to artists' music and to the artists themselves, not to say that we know her personally, but we care about how her art is received the same way people are very protective over certain designers or they're very protective over certain labels you know this is the same thing for us or certain artists you know this is how it feels so with that being said I think that those switcheroo barbs that I discussed earlier in the video, they were actually more influenced by the hate train and their fear that Nicki Minaj would be surpassed at that time, whether it was by Cardi or whether it was just like a general fear because there was more female rappers around. Now the most significant consequence of the real trauma that the Barb's struggled with during the hate train, and in my view, the cause of some of the most chaos in this fan base, is chart positions. Now, chart positions tear the Barb's apart, and I think chart positions have continued have torn the barbs apart ever since you know Nicki Minaj's blackballing um, really was kicking into effect and I think the excellent wins that the barbs were able to bag with Trolls and with Say So Remix and getting Nicki number ones really not only showed the barbs the momentum that they can generate but I think unfortunately because of the trauma of Nicki's blackballing really created this difficult anxiety that remains within the fan base around where Nicki's um, releases chart. You know, it's always that they want to push it and get it to number one and repeat what happened with Trolls and repeat what happened with Say So Remix and LLC, for example. But sometimes I feel I sometimes I feel so sad um, for this fan base because it's not for us to make up for the industry and all of the like consequences of the blackballing and the you know narratives it's it's just not for us but out of love and care and respect for Nicki Minaj her fans want to so bad they want to and it causes so much tension in the fan base because realistically in my opinion and in the opinion of many other barbs the real reason or the real source of this anxiety is because barbs want to use nikki's chart positions and so on to argue with those switched up barbs that i mess uh, mentioned before in the video you know they want to drag each other over chart positions oh, your face Or if it's like, so let's say your fave gets a top 40. Oh, your fave can't even crack top 20. Then they get top 20. Oh, your fave can't even crack top 10. It's so... It's just not in the spirit of the music. And it's really difficult. It's really difficult. And this anxiety over the blackballing and everything, it just brings down the energy around new releases. And things aren't the same. And... To the point that Nikki herself commented on it and I also want to send a throwback to a classic video where she talks about how charts have taken the enjoyment out of things and also Queen Beyonce who said the exact same thing now it matters to the kids like what number is your song on the chart right. and psychologically it does make them like it more or less it, it really makes them put it in their head. This is a good song because it's getting played every day on the radio. So another consequence of the hate train that is divided and fractured the fan base is that they are very aggressive 
and protective over artists working with Nicki, and that's largely due to the motorsport debacle of 2017. And it means that if an artist is working with Nicki or has expressed interest in working with Nicki, you know, there will be those barbs that will be, you know, say, do you even have the 500K? Or say, you better promote this song or else, you know, not necessarily doing the best for Nicki's brand. And whilst I understand, and even Nicki herself understands, nonetheless, it just led her to have to speak out and say, look, don't do corny stuff like attack people that I mess with, you know. Even if somebody had said stuff about Nikki in the past and then apologized, she still doesn't want her fans to keep going in on that person. But because of the trauma and because of how abandoned not only Nicki Minaj, but her fans were during that hate train period, it makes it really, really difficult for them to stomach and digest these people who contributed to that now trying to speak publicly and positively about Nicki. And I think the big biggest one is Lil Nas X because Lil Nas X used to be known as Nas Mirage. He used to be an OG Twitter barb. He, you know, had a lot of support from the barbs to blow and then denied being a barb and then came out as a barb a year ago. And then, you know, when Beam Me Up Scotty came out, was posting up in his Barbie chain and you had a lot of barbs in there saying, keep that, we don't want it, switch, keep that side. and that was not that great because he took down his post and that could have been a really great moment to expand Nikki's brand to his new audience, which is diverse. And that is the problem. You see what I mean? That's where the trauma is actually causing barbs to shoot themselves in the foot and they may not even realize it because they're too in pain to see beyond that and letting that trauma go is going to be a huge moment for the barbs and i think nikki's as i mentioned her migration towards tiktok i think is a great example of really showing the barbs that it's time for them to have a reckoning and let the hurt go so the last point i want to make on the hate train and its impact it's had upon the fan base is that the end of the hate train um, signals the end of an era for the Barb's where they dominated the narrative during the hate train because Nikki was largely on hiatus and off social media. And so a lot of the narrative around um, Nikki and her fans was about the Barb's dragging for her. And now the hate train is over, the conversation is shifting away from being about the Barb's to just about Nikki, you know, she has a baby now, another one that's not the Bob's, and a husband, and her fans have a different role to play in her life. And, you know, Bob's protected and served valiantly for the queen during the hate train, but that time is over, and it's Nikki's career, not ours. And I think that a huge source of some of the chaos and a little bit of the trauma is that the time is finally coming for the GP. So just the general population who turned against her or slept on her or were ignorant during the hate train. And if they've come now to accept her power and her influence. And so what I think we're seeing with the Barb's fan base is that those toxic fans who felt a sense of ownership over her, um, the ones that switched up because she wouldn't do what they wanted. And those fans that felt a sense of loyalty towards her during her most lonely time in the industry, they're now sort of afraid that they're not gonna be as relevant and important to her as they used to be. And I think that's where a lot of the chaos within the fan base is happening. This is a big time of restructuring. And Nikki's move to TikTok and interacting with a wider range of people shows her gearing up to develop her brand. You know, Nikki is not the same Nicki Minaj she was when she hopped on Twitter in 2009. She's not the same Nicki Minaj she was when she jumped on MySpace in 07. And now as she continues to develop her brand and get even more, and that's even more global appeal, the world is 
falling back in love with her or falling in love with her for the first time and things have moved on from the hate train era and things aren't about making her compete with anyone or protecting her from anything. It's just about appreciating her for who she is. And you know, the re-release of Beam Me Up Scotty perhaps is a great moment for some of the barbs to remember that there was times before the hate train where no one knew who she was and then the world fell in love with her. And you know, her going back to her old sound, her old hair, I think should be a great source of comfort for those fans. So in conclusion, a lot has changed since Nikki's barbs first came on the scene. And Nikki will always love them, will always love her, but the second decade of her career is different. You know, this is about her, it's not about them. At the beginning, it was Nikki and the barbs against the world. And I think that the difficult step for the barbs to embrace is heal from the hate train, and then get back to what's important, loving Nicki Minaj's music. You know, I don't see Barb's, you know, sharing links anymore and making funny memes and talking about their favorite bars and, you know, let, making other people think, damn, I wanna be like them, they're having a great time, why am I not a Barb? That's what makes people wanna listen to her music. And, you know, this is what it's about. It's about the music. It's not about us. Yes, Nikki's fans have played an important role in her career, but it's her career. We need to let go of trying to get her to compete, let go of trying to be her A&R, let go of trying to force everything to be a number one, let go of trying to hold on to the past because it hurt us. Let go of all of that and let Nikki shine because honestly, I think that the trauma and the chaos that I've talked about in this video does have a potential to not hurt Nikki's brand, but at least hinder it and limit how much we can expand in her second decade. And the other impact as well is that I think for hip hop, it really doesn't allow people to see how powerful and influential this fan base and Nikki's relationship with her fan base is and what hip hop can learn from her fan base. Because right now, a lot of people only understand the barbs in relation to being toxic. And I've explained the different sources of that toxicity and how some of it stems from legitimate pain and trauma. But nonetheless, the barbs themselves need to change their brand. And you know how we change our brand? By getting back to the music. So. On that note, I'm going to wrap up this video. Make sure that you click the like button, click the subscribe button, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think. What do you think? Do you think the barbs are falling apart? Do you agree with me with what I've talked about with trauma and chaos? Or do you think that there's anything else that I didn't talk about in this video that needs to be discussed? Leave it all in the comments below. Um, Make sure that you follow no underscore ghostwriter on Twitter and Instagram for 24-7 rap and hip-hop talk. And we're now on TikTok as no ghostwriter, so don't miss that. Check us out. And um, I'm gonna go stream Beam Me Up Scotty and see you guys in the next video. Peace!